Hey guys, how's it going? This is John Grant, and today I'm going to be walking through me and Dave Raval's project, uh, Midnight Sun. This was a track that we released uh, really recently. Well, actually, I'll just say the date, October uh, 14th, I believe it was, on Enhanced Progressive. Uh, this was a track that was a long time in the making and one that he and I had worked on back and forth for a long time. Uh, you know, David and I have been friends for a long time and we've worked on productions with uh, each other for a number of years. And, um, you know, the, the project really started out of this melody idea that I believe he started. And then from there, it just sort of kind of took its own form over time and so, yeah, I just wanted to point out that, you know, this first part of the video, I just wanted to kind of just talk a little bit about uh, just first the fact that this isn't actually the mix down project. This is just the production project. The actual uh, mix down project was a separate one since what we did was we eventually stemmed uh, all of the groups out and then compiled them into a separate mix. Uh, and so that's the one that you hear uh, that was eventually mastered. This is just the production project, but this does contain essentially every single element that we used for the final uh, mix down. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So obviously the first thing with this track is the arrangement. Uh, you know, we knew early on that we wanted this track to kind of have like a trance sort of feel, but with a bit more of a progressive sort of uh, vibe. And I think the key to that was really just sort of, you know, letting this section of the verses and stuff kind of not be super, super long and then kind of get into like the first drop right away, as you can see here in the blue. So I'll play that back for you so you can kind of hear an example of what it sounds like. So that to me was really important was just kind of getting to that initial idea that you'll later hear in the drop over here. And the main difference between this first drop and the second drop was really just the fact that this second drop just adds a few more euphoric high end scents, whereas the first drop is a little bit more subdued, but there still is sort of that energy and it's kind of leading people into thinking that something bigger is going to come. Um, you know, a lot of times with these types of tracks, people will just drop into um you know a, a drop that doesn't have any sort of chord progression change but um i've never been a huge fan of those i always like to have some kind of chord progression change whenever the big drop comes in and so that's what we did here um i guess the next thing that we can talk about is the low end uh obviously with you know any progressive or trance track you kind of want to separate your bases and stuff like that from each other uh, so we did that here we have sort of like our first Bayer lace which I'll play what it sounds like on the drop but very simple mid bass uh, using silent nothing too crazy um, this was sort of like the heavy bass that we used to kind of differentiate between the first and second choruses and it kind of gave it like a bit of a different edge then the sub you know with just the typical uh, you know, I've been using this preset for quite a long time, the super sub, just kind of like how it sounds. It just has like a nice vibe. And I think especially with the MIDI notes that we were using on this track, you know, they tend to bounce around a lot. So having a sub bass that was uh, going to be responsive to those notes was important. A lot of times when you're using certain sub basses, when you have notes that are kind of going up in octaves and stuff like that, it doesn't always work out the way you expect it to. So you got to try a couple of different sub basses until you find one that really flows and gels well with uh you know with your entire track but uh just to give you an example of what all the bases sound like when we isolate them and again this isn't the actual mix track um you know with these two bases typically what i would do is try to reduce the low end on them so you know i would come in here to you know both of these groups and then pull in an eq uh try to find out like where that uh, second octave is and then try to cut it from there so like in this case you know if we're looking at this uh, mid bass you know we got these first two octaves right here and then trying to do like a nice hard cut like right around here so that the bass um, you know especially the sub 
can really kind of take up this space. Uh, one trick you can also do is have like a saw wave that's doing the second octave and then the first octave for the sub. Just leave it alone with the sub. So this would be the sub. And then this would be sort of like the second saw wave bass that you could use as a pseudo sub. Um, yeah, so moving on from that, you know, uh, the next thing we did was, you know, really work out on the strings and on the synth section. Uh, you know, the synths on this song are pretty complex, and a lot of that is due to David. Uh, he's a really great uh, melody man, just knows how to write beautiful melodies. Uh, so let's go ahead and listen to this first pluck that we have here, which is sort of, I think, the guiding one for the track. Uh, again, just using a silent synth. This was actually done by a good friend of mine, Michael Oakley. He made this patch, um, you know, layered with a Jupiter 8. And then another layer with Dune 3. So all those three synths kind of worked really well together to bring out that pluck sound. There's a little grum sample here from one of his sample packs that was used as a one shot. There was also this underlying sound that never really made uh, a huge impact on the mix, but I always just liked it. And it was another little grum sample that um, you can hear it more on the outro than you can on this section. But um, yeah, I always liked that part a lot. The next part was, I think, sort of like there was this main riff that we ended up using, which was right here, which I had frozen because I think it was taking up too much CPU at the time or something. Yeah, so these chords, I think, were really what inspired me to continue working on the song. Uh, David had, I think, originally developed these, and I might have added a few notes here and there, but this was sort of like the bones of what the song would end up becoming. Uh, if I recall correctly, this was just like the very first initial idea that we had, and then obviously those little plucks and stuff, but this chord progression is kind of what drove me to be like, okay, this song has got a lot of potential. I really like how these chord sound, so let's play around with it. And again, you know, that's all going to go into the, you know, the, the actual drop. So, you know, if I were to just kind of just separate these guys and play them on the drop, you'll be able to hear them. Uh, one of the challenges on this song was adding in as many synths as we did because when the second part of the drop comes in, there's just a lot of stuff going on. So like you'll be able to hear it here. That was just like a little arpeggio that I think I pulled out of a sample pack that I was able to change a few notes around. Um, just worked out really nice. These pads were sort of more like drone type pads. This was like the final lead, I think, that... You know, originally I didn't think that would fit, but for some reason it just kind of worked in the track. I may have not actually included that last one in the final mix. Um, there might have been a chance that I deleted it, but uh, it's there. Um, I think one of the cool aspects about this track moving on to the next section was really the vocals uh the vocals to me really made this track uh very exciting to play with and a lot of what i did with the vocals was is i would get a vocal sample that i liked and then i would you know put a couple of otts on it with delays and stuff and then i would get an effect that would just kind of make the sound really huge and massive so you can hear it on this example You know, and just being able to elongate those vocals, I think, just really makes what is so fun about dance music special. And especially with trance and progressive, you can get these really ginormous, long vocals um, by just applying, you know, like just different compressors, uh, different delays. And, um, you know, one of the ways that I go about it, like I said, is just, you know, you add in a couple of uh, OTTs and then you add a 
you know, an echo, then you add another OTT, and then you just kind of have to refine and do a lot of mixing on them, uh, you know, especially EQing so that they don't uh, sound too crazy, but. And then I think there were some other vocal spots. Um, i trying to remember where they're at exactly. But there's this one part where it's like, the night. and that's like a, I believe it's from one of these. It might be actually under my samples group, which uh, could be under here. Yeah. Yeah, so those soulful vocals that I had there were another element that I think really made the song special. I don't think it would have been the same track without those, honestly. And those were vocals that we did for a sample magic pack that I uh, worked on a long time ago, uh, which, uh, you know, we hired somebody that just knows how to replicate that sort of soulful house and those early house vocals from back in the 90s. And um, they just add so much character. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously those types of little things, those little snippets there just really add a lot. Um, I always love adding stuff like that. A couple of small other vocal elements that we added. Um, nothing super crazy. But yeah, you know, I, I just love adding vocal shots. I love being able to process them and give them their own life. And I think it's one of those things where, you know, when someone hears a track and you know, people always wonder, you know, where did you get that from? And a lot of times it is just a simple sample, but a lot of times it's a lot of resampling a sample. And then uh, in order to achieve some kind of effect that you want to get to, right? Uh, let's talk about the drums a little bit. So the drums for this track are pretty simple, really. Um, you know, there's obviously like a lot of different stuff going on, but the general groove and vibe of it is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, so let's go ahead and play through some of the drums with the kick. You know, the kick that I used, I believe, was just a uh, was a dead mouse kick from one of his splice sample packs that I really liked a lot. Yeah, when I first heard that kick, I wasn't really super a big fan of it, but then I started kind of liking it. I remember I didn't really like that little shaker thing at the end of it, but it eventually became part of the track, and I didn't even notice it anymore by the time it was, uh, you know, actually on the song. Uh, you know, for the snares, I think I just used some Dave Parkinson's uh, snares. He's got some amazing stuff. Uh, I tried to recreate some Prida style snares where kind of get that like nice hi-hat and snare groove some uh some more snares some basic tops um yeah so i think with drums it's you know there's no right or wrong way of doing things it's just sort of trying to find the right groove and you know once you get it you just kind of stick to it um but yeah typically the way i like to set up my drums is just to separate them from the kick and you know just kind of give them like their own sort of channel so that they have some room to breathe. Uh, I think on the drop, you know, obviously they're probably gonna have a lot of stuff going on, but. Yeah, not a whole lot there. Um, I have this nice snare that Farius was very kind to loan me a while ago that I still use to this day for kind of adding intensity on drops. I believe it's a snare from uh, one of the cashmere sample packs because I remember going through a snare one time and, and hearing it and thinking, oh, this might be the same snare, but he's uh, added a lot of effects to it, so it's a little different. But um, yeah, it's still a really cool sounding snare that um, I like to layer. And uh, whenever I add it to like the second part of a drop or even the drop itself, it just kind of adds a bit more intensity than it would have in the first half of the song. Um, Okay, so let's now talk about the effects. Again, the effects in this track are pretty standard. You know, a lot of risers, downlifters, crashes, uh, impacts, all sorts of things. Um, you know, one of the things that I always think is important to do is to have your own uh, risers. So I always try to create my own spire uplifters. Uh, 
you know, you can use any synth you want, obviously, but typically what I do is I just automate from, you know, the center position of the uh, pitch wheel and then uh, just make sure that I have the bend up to 24 or 36 uh, and, you know, just kind of gives that nice rising effect and, you know, I just kind of let it ring out once it comes into like the, that section right there. <laughs> For whatever reason right there, it stops really abruptly. It should continue going with the reverb, but um, I don't know. Maybe there's something in the project file that's not allowing it to do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard really. I mean, there's a lot of uh, vocal effects loops that I have in the track here. These are very subtle. Uh, you know, typical, these are custom fills that I've made that I just love using. And that's something that I do a lot. Um, you know, whenever I'm creating a new track or building tracks, uh, I always try to create my own custom fills and stuff like that, just to kind of separate the way my stuff sounds from other people. Cause I know a lot of people will just go straight to the sample packs for this kind of stuff, but, um, you know, being able to build your own effects, I think, gives you a, 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 a signature sound that's your own. And um, so I like doing that. I'll do that a lot, too, with downlifters and crashes. But if I'm in kind of a hurry, I'll just use the standard sample pack stuff, which I think is totally fine as well. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to fills and risers and stuff like that, I think being able to create your own is super helpful. Um, and then lastly, I guess I could talk a little bit about the, as far as the production goes, the piano uh, stuff. I think it was really important to making this track sound unique. Um, these are some pianos that I think David had written that I thought were super nice. Um, you know, just using the standard M1, which I think is a super great piano. It just uh, has that classic 90s vibe and I've used it on, you know, any track of mine that has piano will usually have an M1 on it at some point. Um, it's just got that signature sound of the 90s that I think is, uh, you know, people resonate with it. When they hear that piano, they immediately will be drawn back to other tracks that remind them of that piano. And so it's, um, you know, if you're trying to sort of go with that retro house vibe, uh, it's great. And, you know, and the thing about this track is that it does have a bit of that nostalgic feel of it feeling kind of a bit old, but at the same time, it has like those modern sounds. And I think that's sort of the balance that I always try to go for with uh, these types of songs for John Grand and, you know, other collaborations that I've done with people. If I do, I always try to have like that little small signature on there of like those those pianos from the 90s to kind of just shine out if I can whenever possible. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it as far as the production, you know, on the mixing and mastering side, again, this isn't the project file that I used for mixing and mastering, but, um, I didn't actually master the final song that was done by, uh, the label themselves. But, um, as far as the mixing goes, there's not really a whole lot to talk about. Um, you know, as far as like the actual mix bus, there was just a easy, uh, pro C2, couple of EQing to things that I did, um, you know, a little bit of a subtle stereo enhancer. This is something that I like to use uh, just to kind of give the track a little bit more uh, stereoness and width, but then I typically end up cutting the uh, low side of the track so that the basses are mono and then the uh, stereo signal is a little bit more uh, bright. And um, yeah, I mean, there's really not a whole lot, uh, you know, I think for as far as the mixing goes, you know, it's the, the standard principles of just trying to find any frequencies that are just a little bit too overbearing on the entire track. Um, and um, yeah, just cutting out certain frequencies, obviously, that are not needed on the drums and uh, on the synths and the bass and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I don't really consider myself to be an expert mixing engineer. So I think for me, it's really about getting the production down uh, really, really well first. And um, from there, just getting feedback from friends and 
uh, you know, in some instances having somebody else mix it because I think a lot of times when you've worked on a track for so long, uh, you eventually start losing focus on how the track should sound because you've kind of gone into demo syndrome where you hear the track over and over again and you kind of start losing focus on the overall picture of the track so yeah whenever i i, I try to finish these mix downs uh it can be very challenging but um you know the good news is that when this track was done and i did mix it um i wasn't requested to make any changes so i guess i must have done something right but those uh i mean that happening is is very uh rare uh nine times out of ten there will always be uh, mixed changes and stuff like that but um yeah so anyways this was the walkthrough for uh the john grant and dave revolve midnight sun track that we produced and was released on enhanced progressive on october 14th um it's super excited with the reception that this one's been getting it seems like people are really enjoying it and um it'll be fun to potentially write another song similar to this one day um but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough and um don't forget to uh check out uh john grand's uh link tree you can check out my link tree uh it's just linktree.com slash john grand and um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this talk to you later